Ever since I was stung as a child, I have this enormous hatred for bees. If I ever saw one around, I'd either try to beat the crap out of it or run away like a pussy. But when I saw Jerry Seinfeld's bee movie, it suddenly made me realize, I used to really like bees. Yeah, as a kid, anytime there was bees on TV or in cartoons or something, I always thought they were cool. I used to love those old Down Duck cartoons or the Honey Nut Cheerios commercials. I actually really liked bees. And seeing this film reminded me why. There is sort of this creativity and ingenuity that can be brought out of from what they are. And this movie takes full advantage of that, using their jobs, their homes, their abilities, and even their coronation to make some really memorable, funny scenes. So what's the story? Jerry Seinfeld is a bee who's just graduating from... bee school. I guess. You'll never guess what he got on his report card. And a perfect report card. All bees. Yeah, there's a few other bad puns like that too. But he has a problem. He doesn't like the idea that he's going to be assigned to one job for the rest of his life. So he decides to go out and see the world before he does. Alright, so this is going to be like Ants, right? Where he's trying to fight for free will and the individual and such. Actually, no. He comes across a woman played by Renee Zellweger and decides to reveal that he can actually talk, and they share a nice relationship together. Okay, so what? Everyone's gonna say you can't date a human that's gonna be fighting against prejudices there? Actually, no! When he discovers that honey is being used by humans, he decides to sue the human race. And it turns into this gigantic trial, trying to show that bees are people too. Well, not literally, but you know what I mean. Alright, so what, he's gonna win the court case and everyone's gonna be happy and actually no! The bees, it turns out, gets too much honey, which means they don't have to work anymore, which means they don't pollinate anymore, which means all the plants of the world start to die. And now it's up to Seinfeld and Zellweger to try and get the world back to order. You know what? Freaking kudos to this movie. I honestly had no idea where it was gonna go. And I love films like that, they're constantly making me guess. Though the one downside is everything I was talking about before, like Seinfeld being tied to his job, never addressed again. The prejudice of a bee dating a human, never addressed again. Hell, even the fact that she's married to Patrick Warburton and she's kind of having an affair with a bee, you guessed it, never addressed again. So I guess in that sense, it's somewhat lazy. And it just sort of stops story arcs that were starting to get going and then just goes to something else. But what pulls it through is the fact that it has a very likable cast, very likable animation, very likable colors, very creative atmospheres and environments, and it's just straight up funny. I mean, like I said before, some of the puns really do die and they're pretty lame, but a lot of these jokes really hit bullseyes, even ones I think wouldn't hit bullseyes. Like I saw this B. Larry King and I remember thinking to myself, oh my god, really? Are they honestly doing this? But then they turned into something funny. You know they have a Larry King in the human world too. It's a common name. Next week on B. Larry King. No, 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 I mean he looks like you and he has a show with suspenders and different colored dots behind him. Next week on B. Larry that King. Old guy glasses and there's quotes along the bottom from the guest you're watching even though you just heard him. I'm usually not a fan of Seinfeld as an actor per se, nor really Renee Zellweger, but both of them are incredibly likable in this. Seinfeld's a good-hearted wisecracker and Zellweger's sort of a good-hearted eccentric. Even the side characters like Patrick Warburton, Chris Rock as this laid-back mosquito, or Matthew Broderick as the best friend. Yes, even Broderick's tolerable in this. But on top of that, the ideas for this world they create are just so likable and, I don't know, it just brought me back to being a kid again. I mean, listen to some of these ideas. Wow, what does that do? Catches that little strand of honey that hangs after you pour it. Saves us millions. And on top of that, I think there's something about DreamWorks animation that I don't know what they do, but they can really simulate motion well. Particularly flying. The flying scenes in this movie really work, and it really feels like you're off the ground and you're traveling with these creatures. Even getting stuck to a car, you feel like you're really on that car being pushed against the windshield. I really didn't expect to like B-Movie going into it, and yeah, some parts don't work. I mean, some of the animation is a little odd, particularly on the humans. Some of the puns can get old, and the story is sort of all over the place. But I still liked the characters, the ingenuity, the creativity, and the spontaneity of it. I was pleasantly shocked by it and was really happy to see it. It's one of the few movies I wish would be re-released on the big screen. Maybe even in 3D! I love to see these moments on the big screen. I think I sort of missed out. So I guess if you're looking for a movie that has a little bit more depth or story arc to it, you're probably not going to find it here. But if you're looking for something lighthearted with some good laughs, some good voice acting, and a lot of creative designs and animation, then I say B-Movie is definitely a flick to check out.